So according to a new report from Chainalysis, North America is now in second place for total crypto transactions. So we're kind of looking at this picture saying like, what is a crypto transaction what is not? They're just kind of saying like, ooh, if we're moving money from here to here, that's kind of what we're, we're comparing. Uh, Europe was in first place with over $1 trillion of crypto transactions over the six month period that they were testing. China and East Asia notably tumbled over this period. That was mostly due to the new edicts of China that are pushing out a lot of crypto exchanges and a lot of crypto industry in that total area. DeFi, of course, was the hallmark of this report. DeFi in North America, there's there's been a lot of hiccups uh, for sure with the SEC cracking down on it in some cases. Uh, some people weren't even able to get airdrops like the DUI DX airdrop earlier this uh, this last few months. So there's been some kind of hiccups there, but on the most part, DeFi has been leading the way for adoption of cryptocurrency in North America. Naomi, I want to throw this to you. I guess my question is, I'm somewhat surprised that North America is in first place. I think when people see headlines about crypto or Bitcoin, they're all assuming that it's happening in North America. And then we look at this report, we see, nope, it's actually happening mostly in Europe or and historically it's been happening a lot in East Asia and in China. Uh, but North America is coming up in the ranks, which is uh, probably better for prices, I guess, overall. But I'll leave it there for you. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that North America ranks so highly, <laughs> considering that there's been so much crackdown from the SEC and there's such regulatory uncertainty out there. So many projects are being pushed offshore. People in America are not getting access to projects because the SEC is making sure that they don't have access to projects. So I'm actually surprised that it's still doing so well despite all of this. It makes a lot of sense to me that uh, Europe would be in the lead right now. What was interesting about the report uh, was that China actually, uh, it wasn't uh, when China announced the bans that they started to tumble. It was actually April 2020, the volume started to drop in East Asia, which was a surprised to me. I didn't realize that. Um, and there was an explanation for why this might have been the case. Obviously, China has been moving towards a long-term big ban for a while. This May this year wasn't the first Chinese ban. They've banned it multiple times in the past. Um, and so maybe that continued crackdown was making people look elsewhere in terms of you know, finding a, a way to have a sustainable business. Perhaps it wasn't a smart play to keep it inside China. Maybe people were seeing that. But also, there was an interesting note um, uh, that China actually started testing its own central bank digital currency that month, so the month that it actually started to tumble. So perhaps the Chinese miners and Chinese companies saw the writing on the wall with that and realized that China did not want a competitor to their central bank digital currency. Turns out that they were correct and now they've completely cracked down on it. So that was an interesting uh, note from the report. But Jen, I'll throw it to you for your take. Jen is frozen, uh -oh, so I'm going to throw to Zach. Gone. Oh, Jen's frozen. What the heck? All right. Yeah. Um, you thought to me, yeah, DeFi, man, when the regulators get caught up to where crypto is now and not where it was in 2017, it's going to get really interesting. And numbers like this suggest that it's going to matter for a lot of folks. So this to me is super duper interesting. We just reported as we were going live that Uniswap Labs, which is obviously the team behind Uniswap, largest DEX on Ethereum, uh, hired a former Obama spokesman as its new head of communications. So um, the, uh, the, the, the human capital that's flowing into the space to shape these conversations around DeFi and regulation in the US context, uh, we're seeing more of that. It's going to be really interesting to see how these conversations unfold, especially since DeFi is surprisingly big over here. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out. But Jen, if you are not frozen, wave your hands in the I'm air. I'm not frozen. And wave them I'm like you just bad. don't care. Okay, I'm going to pass it down <laughs> well, to you. What do you got? Yeah, I'm not sure what you guys spoke about while I was gone for a few moments there. But I saw a headline this morning that said uh, this report said that the trading volume on DeFi platforms outperformed those uh, that of central exchanges, which was really interesting to me because I think we've spoken about it on the show a lot as, as central ex exchanges being this on-ramp for, for people who are new to the space. And there are still a lot of people who are really confused about DeFi and don't know how to get involved. And so it was interesting to me that the trading volume is outperforming that of central exchanges. And Will, I wonder, is, is this just that people who are operating in DeFi are operating in it at a larger scale and we still need to get that mainstream audience on board somehow? Uh, I'll give it to Naomi. She looks like she has an answer to that. 
question. Yeah, I definitely have a take there. So if you're looking at centralized exchanges, what they're great for is the fiat on-ramp. When people are trading, they're not going back and forth between fiat and crypto. If they're going to find a hedge, they're probably going to go into a stable coin and staying within the crypto ecosystem. They definitely don't need a centralized exchange for that. Honestly, I don't see much relevance for centralized exchanges for a lot of what DeFi participants want to do. They're all in decentralized exchanges because there's less KYC in those areas, is uh, you know, more liquidity, um, there's better fees, like all of that stuff plays a, a part. DeFi has just become better in so many ways, which is just so far above where we were just a few years ago where there was no liquidity in the DEXs because we just hadn't figured out how to have these automatic market makers yet. And now they're just all through the DeFi space and there's so much liquidity there. So yeah, people, um, the, the majority of trading is just not going back and forth between uh, fiat and cryptocurrency. So there's just not as much of a reason to use centralized exchanges, but I'll throw it to Will. Yeah, I disagree in part on some aspects of that. I think centralized exchanges definitely still have their value, if you're looking at like bids and spreads on uh, purchases, you're still going to get a better price quote on a centralized exchange just because something like Uniswap or Curve, where you're seeing larger uh, movements of, of trades, you can't quite get the, the bids that you would on a centralized exchange. I think it's getting there. Uh, I think one kind of highlight of this report that Coindesk touched on, I think last month in a report, is that OTC desks around China have been shutting down, and that makes up a sizable percentage of trades in the crypto market writ large. It's not something the average retailer is really thinking about, but OTC desks do matter. They're moving large amounts of capital, often Bitcoin or Ethereum across the ocean and between different players in the space. And a lot of these OTC desks in China have had to shut down or move offshore. Uh, so I think that makes up a large reason why we're seeing that a lot of the kit volume is moving out of that region. Naomi, I'll throw it back to you before we get a break though. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, Will, it. how much of the mine or how much of the volume is due to liquidity mining? Because as we know, you know, BlockFi has been sent all of these subpoenas from all over the country and cease and desists and all kinds of things. We've got Coinbase saying they can't offer their lend product. Anytime you have a centralized player like Celsius, they're all being attacked by regulators. But DeFi, you're still able to earn all this interest. You're still able to move that money and actually uh, make the most of all of this liquidity mining. Um, so what percentage of this volume is coming from all of that? Yeah, I don't have a, have a good number off the top of my head, but I think you bring up a really uh, salient point is that a lot of the volume in DeFi is incentivized to be there by token rewards. And that's the question for DeFi still to answer. Will people be using these applications once those incentives dry up, whether the token prices dry up or the teams decide to stop issuing tokens? For example, Compound Finance issued their comp token last summer in 2020. And then after the token rewards started drying up, price went down a little bit, and then some other competitors popped up. Wasn't saying that Compound's out of the game, but definitely less, less reason to use it uh, compared to other exchanges if you're not going to get a token reward. So that's a very fair point to bring up.